This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. You are your greatest asset. It's time you started investing in that. Visit BetterHelp.com forward slash Double Toasted and take care of you. Dune was never written to be a movie. It was never. never. It was never meant to be translated. So if they had a hard time translating, that's because it was never meant to go on the screen in the first place. Yep. Which is why I have to like applaud this movie for making access making it accessible to me. Awesome. I mean, you know, that's I really, man. I. It might not work one hundred percent, but wow, you did pull me in this world. about to get into our review right now i know a lot of people are asking we're doing that man yeah. i want to i want to put my toes in the sand mm. people before we get into our review for that i need to let you know that this review and this portion of the show is sponsored by kiwi co now we're about to talk about dune you know dune that's a that's a that's a that's a, what they call a dense book intellectual yeah man I know a lot of y'all grew up reading these books because you ain't dumb. And some of y'all, you're so smart, you got smart kids now. Which means that you don't want them playing with any old dumb toy out there. Right. Any old stupid toy. No, you want them playing with toys. And you want them involved in projects that actually expose in the concepts of things like, I don't know, science, technology, oh. engineering. Oh, Math. Oh, my type of language. The arts. The arts? Everything that you're not. So, <laughs> so you don't want to play with these toys, but if that is your kid, <laughs> send them over to KiwiCo. KiwiCo, they make toys and they make projects that define the future of play by making it engaging, oh. enriching, and, hey, not just fun, but seriously fun. I think they have... Eight subscription lines of crates, each catering to a different age group, each catering to a different topic. And it's not, you know, you hear me saying kids. It's not just for the kids out there. Well, I don't know, some big kids out there. Let's just say from kids, I don't know, from four to kids to the age of 99 or 100 years old. That's some for, old kids. For them old ass kids <laughs> out there. Old ass like kids. Like me. <laughs> yeah. Because I tell you, and I'm just waiting to do this, but here's. Oh, you here's, got some. Yeah, here's one of the crates that they sent me. And so this one, now the, I, I tell you, the next time that you see me bring KiwiCo up, you're going to see me with these. And let me see right Can here. I guess which one is that one? What is it? Is that the one about the headphones? That's the headphones. Oh, God. Yes, I seen that one. I want to do it so bad. Yeah, well, you can't do it with me because I already told my wife I do. Uh, but next time I come on here, you're going to see me working with, or, or, you're going to see me wearing these headphones, sitting up here bobbing my head to something. Yeah. And the best thing about it, it's the headphones that I built. But... You know, that's that's the, great. They have other things out there. Like I said, you know, this is all, all the way from science to engineering to math. And they have art projects here like oh. silk screening. Uh, this is something where you can take a design, actually put it on a backpack, and wear your design with you, man. That's great. If you have a kid that, you know, is into graphic design or graphic arts and you want to see if it has an interest, that's a great beginner tool. Well, here's another thing. So yeah. you're pushing your kids into, like, when they think we're talking about STEM, you, well, you got to make your kid a scientist. you got to make your kid an engineer. You know, but that's true. But think about it this way. What if you're training your kid to be an entrepreneur? Yeah. What if the kid starts doing silk screening and says, you know what? You know what, Mom? You know what, Dad? I can actually one day... Just mass produce this and do this for a living. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, the claw. Yeah, that. That's too smart for you. Here, you can have it. Right there. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You subscribe to this and you get a different crate every month, tailoring to your needs. You can see this girl right here. She's aiming for the neighbor's house with this. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you start wildfires. Yeah. <laughs> this is nah. for not giving me any candy on Halloween. <laughs> nah, man. But here's what you do. You can start getting your crates now. And you can start by, first of all, go to KiwiCo.com forward slash double toasted and get 50% off your first month. Oh. Once again, that is KiwiCo.com forward slash Double Toasted. Put that in. Tell them Double Toasted sent you. And you get your first crate for 50% off that first month. Now, I want to thank KiwiCo for sponsoring and supporting this part of the show. And I also want to thank you out there 
as always, for your support. Thank you very much. And now, let's get on with our review. Wow. It's time. Now, I tell you, when it comes to Doom, I know a lot of people who are associated with Doom one way or another. I know that... A lot of people, they've seen that crazy-ass David Lynch doing out there. A poison has been introduced into your body through firewalls. By milking this, this smooth little cat body. What the f*** is that? Okay, the, a lot of people saying that ain't the dune I know, but a lot of people have seen this dune right here. That's David Lynch doing what he wants to do. That's David it's, Lynch being David not, Lynch. It's not in the books. It's not ain't, in the books. Y'all, whoever's reading the book, ain't no, ain't no cat... Ain't no rat in the lab coat over here. Yep. <laughs> I even know some people who have seen that documentary about an even crazier Doom yep. movie being made. Uh, what is it? J- Jadowowski's Doom. Uh, yes. Dune. 3,000 droids. The castle. Open the mouth. Uh, <laughs> the spaceship came in the tongue. Uh, you know, it's probably best that that never got made right there. He's talking about tongue and spaceships. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe. Unique vision. Probably best that we did not see that go through. There's even people out there who have seen that Dune TV show that was on sci-fi. Yeah. You know, but I realize that I've hardly spoken to anyone. And seriously, y'all, I've seen the books everywhere, but I realize I've hardly spoken to anyone that has actually read the the books. Yep. Now, I I did know someone uh, 20 years ago. I knew someone 20 years ago who actually read the books and then... There's Boom Carlos. Yes. Then there's you. And I'm going to tell you something. Since you have read the books, from my limited experience with Dune, I can honestly say that Dune fans are the nerdiest people that I know. They're worse than Star Wars fans. They, Trekkies and Star Wars fans, don't have, no. they ain't got shit on. You doonies out there. <laughs> yeah, Listen. they got nothing on you. When I talk about people nerd out on Dune, that dude that I hung out with 20 years ago, that dude, in his spare time at work, because I, I worked with him at this animation studio. This is a true story. In his spare time, he was always making Dune doodles. Yeah. He was always talking about spice and seven herbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He even spoke in the made-up language in the, in, in the book, yep. man. That dude right there, I don't think that there's a person out there that could beat him. And they can't. No. But you, Carlos, you came close. <laughs> <laughs> this dude, I, I called him up today and he said, hey, you want to come to my Dune party? I'm like, no, I don't want to go to your goddamn Dune party. <laughs> I do have a party, a, a private gathering of me and my closest friends that love Dune. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to see it. A Dune themed costume party. And I said, he asked me if I wanted to go. I was like, hell no, I don't want to go to that nerdy shit. I said, I got a, I got a Batman party to go to. <laughs> I'm lying, man. I actually, I might come to your party. I man, might. you should. You should. You know what? If I can find like a air conditioning coil big enough to come as a, dress up as a worm, <laughs> one of them sandworms on my head, <laughs> I might come dressed up in that. That would be amazing. <laughs> You know, I thought it'd be great, uh, it would be great to bring you on mm-hmm. because since everybody's out of town and got migraines and I'm the only one here that has seen this, I did think that since you are one of two people that I've actually engaged yeah. with that has talked to, to me about doing yeah, a lot yeah. from the source of the books, yep. I thought, why not have you come on here, man, and, uh, and I can give you, uh, I can talk about the review, I can give you my impressions, you can keep me on track because as we said... This is dense material right here. Too dense sometimes. Too much. Too dense sometimes. So, you know, you can give me your impressions from a noob like me of the movie, from my review, and also just keep my ignorant ass in track. Like I said, the book Doom was for a very special group of people, meaning smart. What about dumbasses like me? You How would it appeal to me? The common man. You keep using the word smart, and I truly believe it's a book for everybody. It's just not an easy read. And that's why I have not read it. That's why, <laughs> that's why I waited for the movie. Yep. And that is why I'm going to give you the review right now. <laughs> What's to be? Okay, can I, can, I, can, I, can I tell you something? What's up? Anytime there's something about the desert, whether it's on this planet or another planet, that woman is always there. <laughs> is that the theme song? 
song for every desert out there. Hey, hey, hey. She's everywhere. If you got sand, you got her. Yep. That was me in the background. Like, hey, 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 hey. What, Mia? Feet burning. <laughs> <laughs> um, I heard a perfect description for this, man. What was, as I was As I was watching this, somebody came out and it was a great description. They said that this was Star Wars for adults. I thought that that was great. Being an adult is not always fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's why we watch Star Wars, so that we can just... Feel like big kids. Escapism. Escapism. Yep. Until they start to suck. <laughs> so maybe it's time to grow up. Maybe Dune is just what we need right now, you know? Because I'm not a big fan of the Star Wars movies and what they're doing. So if we can get something from some good source material, which I haven't read this, but apparently this is awesome. So, you know, I'm going to go with this, man. And this is very mature. You know, and in in, in in the nature of, her, of its seriousness. Yep. Because, they they, man, they had taken this very serious. It's like Game of Thrones in space. Like, they are very straight up trying to get into some storytelling here. And I appreciate that they've made this pretty much, I don't know, digestible for everybody out oh, there. Yeah. I'll, you listen, as much as they're talking about how, the way people are talking about how dense these books are, they are. including the first one. You know, because everybody's talking about that, that these books are the size of bricks, man. You know, you've gone to a friend's house who bought, who bought Dune or was a fan of Dune. You never talked about it, but the book was there, and that shit was just weighing down the shelf. You know, the shelf was ready to fall apart. Those things are big as bricks. You could build a house with these books, man. Yep. They're plentiful and big. Yes, they are. And they're talking about how, you know, the stories are so dense that even when you're reading them and you're getting everything, you still have to go to the to the back of the glossary yeah. in the book. You need an appendices to read it. Yeah, the book has the book has a has its own has own has its own index, has its own glossary. It's on appendix. It's on appendix. Yes. Even the Bible ain't got all that shit. There's only one other book that has the same level of detail. And what is that? The Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. It's the only other one that I can and call. And this from probably memory. has a beat, right? Yes, it yeah. has a very much beat in complexity. This movie's credit, man. I have to say that I was surprised how, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to simplify, but it was easy to follow the plot. Perfect. If you watch, if you can keep up with Game of Thrones, you can keep up with Doom the movie. Woo. You know what I mean? It's the same shit, man. Pretty much. And I'm not saying that like they're ripped. Or, of course, Dune is 1967. Frank Herbert. You know, this is when it came out. So if anything, 1965. Is it 65? 65. I thought it was 67. Because it's the first book to win the Nebula Award in 65 and then 66. If I'm not mistaken. You nerd. Anyway, oh, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> I, I told his ass before. I said, "Don't you nerd out? Don't sorry. you dare nerd I'm out?" Sorry. And look at him. Actually, 1965. It was the first two. But no, that's why I have you here. That's why I have you here to keep me on course, man. People fighting over power. power. It's the eternal struggle. That is it, man. Except this time, the power is that spice. Ooh, snapping to the spice. Mm. All right, calm your ass. <laughs> You know, if you want to know the uh, the plot of this, I mean, to, to, to break it down for you in a way that I didn't think I'd be able to break it down, but I, I wrote this down just to make sure, and you tell me if I'm wrong here, I'm... just to make sure I had it right. Because it is complicated. I mean, it's not simple, but it's not hard to follow. Um, also, what's that? Remember that they split this, the book is split into two parts. This yes. is part one. This is part one. So let's be very clear that, you know, there's also a part two that's going to be in development so that it helps the narrative. Well, we'll see about that. That's one of the things I'm cautious about with oh. this. But, so as I said, the eternal struggle struggle of power in this, what am I, the dear Strager? Strager. <laughs> it's the eternal struggle of power. Uh, this right here. The power being spice, the most valuable resource in this world, this 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 universe. Mm -hmm. Without this, the intergalactic travel they tell you in the movie would not be possible. Okay, and they yeah. had to travel all around because it's just like Star Wars. You know, they're trading with different planets and whatnot. But hold on, <laughs> you know, characters that we follow. Well, first of all, there's Paul, played by Timothy Chalamet. 
he's of house Atreides, and he's being groomed to lead his people. Meanwhile, his parents, they're trying to do the right thing, man. They, you know, they're trying to raise their kid, but at the same time, they're trying to make peace with the planet of Arrakis. Uh, Ar Arrakis. Arrak, and they said, no, I got an R at the end of this. Arrakis. <laughs> Ar and I got a hard R. <laughs> Arrakis. You can call the planet Dune. Okay. Plan well, I'm going to go by what the book says. Arrakis. <laughs> also named. <laughs> and we have Duke Leto, Atreides, and his concubine here. Not his wife, but his side chick right over here. His side yeah. piece, Lady Jessica. But they're trying to make peace with this planet because, first of all, they want you know. Let's not play. They want that spice. You know, they they got they got something value that they a value that they want there. But at the same time, it's just the right thing to do on this planet. They feel like they're being uh, exploited, and so they want to make sure that there's something in it for them. And also, they get to keep their spice, and they can keep accessing the planet as long as they want to. But there's always some asshole, always who wants to just keep the program. And that would be, you know, that you have the villainous, what are they, the Harkonnens? Harkonnens. Harkonnens. Yeah. Harkonnens. Harkonnens, led by Stellan Starsguard in a sweaty fat suit. He plays a dude named, and this is, this is, if this is not a, a, a reflection of the times, I don't know what it is. We're talking about 1965, 67, whatever. Uh, his name is Vladimir. Yep. So you know that <laughs> even in space, the Russians are evil. Evil. Uh... Like all villains, they want everything, man. They don't want to make peace. They don't want to give. They, you know, they don't want to share. They want it all. They have beef. They have beef, and they have, and they, you know, they want it all, and they want it with violence. Yep. And they threaten to ruin all the gains towards peace that House Atreides has worked hard to achieve. There's a lot of cool effects here, man. There's a lot of scope. There's a lot of spectacle in there, and. I watched this on IMAX and I was pretty Ooh. amazed, man, at what shit that worm walk popped out. I got up and ran. <laughs> that, shit. that worm filled the screen, man. And I thought it was amazing. You know, I would say that only when it gets into like the deep political stuff, man, only when it gets into like some real hard jargon, only when they get like into some real only only when they get into like the like the the, the real deep business of mm -hmm. Uh, of, of of their going on since when it, that's when I start to tune out. That, beef, that's when it got dry to me. The beef between the houses. Yeah, I mean because you know you got the basics. You know I don't, I don't like you. You don't like me. Let's work it out. Let's go at it. I don't give a f what you want to do. But then they get into the politics. Yep. And the politics that is dry. That's where they bring in all the detail from the from from the the books. But it's not overwhelming. Okay. I mean either you're into it because you love this kind of sci-fi. You love the books or you're going to tune out, man, because, you know, I don't give a shit. Where that worm at? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I have to be honest and say that, it's, you know, I'm, he I'm heaping praise on this. But that said, I understood the story. Maybe there's so small parts that I didn't. All right. But I like the world more than I do the story itself. Yep. It's, it was funny. Though. Now, I know this is the head of Star Wars. When I say familiar... I mean, it was crazy how much I noticed so many. I noticed what George Lucas took shit from Star. You stole that shit, man. You're a thief. No, I was I was influenced. No, you stole that shit, man. Wow. So they Yeah, did. man. Star Wars. I was looking at this. And that listen, I, I know he was influenced by that, but it was just in, interesting to see the 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 uh the uh, uh all of the all the stuff that he was heavily influenced by. I mean, you know, when I look at this, man, it's it, the, the character of Paul. It's, He's Luke. Luke, yes. I mean, Luke, they even, I don't know how, I don't know how detailed the visuals are in the book, but y'all know when Luke is standing on those horizons looking at the sunset on the sand, Paul doing the same <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> Paul is doing the same thing. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> You have the uh, the space politics like you do in uh in, which got way heavy by the time we got to episode in one. the prequels in the prequels yep. yeah they felt so similar man uh man there's even the force the force is, no before the force it was the voice the voice caused by the spice caused by the spice they yep. they actually in the movie have these are not the drawers you're looking for a moment I'm like I'll be damned 
I felt stupid. All this time, I thought it was Star Wars. <laughs> I said I should have I, sh- I should have read this book, man, long ago. Yeah, the whole thing about Star Wars is a simplification of Dune, and it's very streamlined. Yeah, and with yeah. more action. That's pretty much it. And you know what? And that's what it is. I said before. You know, it comes back to that comparison. Uh, you know, uh, Dune is Star Wars for adults. Yep. Or Star Wars is Dune for you know the ma- the, 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 the 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 mainstream. I don't like. Using that comparison specifically because Star Wars can be so much more entertaining than Dune itself. Because there's yeah, yeah. a nice pace into it. And it was mm-hmm. designed to be a movie. Dune was always designed to be a book, not a movie. You're right. You, man, you, that's, that's, that's actually really cool, Carlos. Like, you're right. Yeah. Dune was never written to be a movie. It was never. never. It was never meant to be translated. So if they had a hard time translating, that's because it was never meant to go on the screen in the first place. Yep. Which is why I have to like applaud this movie for making access making it accessible to me. Awesome. I mean, you know, that's I really, man. I. It might not work one hundred percent, but wow. You did pull me in this world. With me saying that I love the the the, the that I love the story more than the world. That's actually kind of a. A, a criticism and a compliment, because and I tell you why it's a compliment. Because you know, here's the compliment for it. I mean, you, you love the world more than the story. I think you said it the other way around. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, mean, I love the world more than the story. Yeah, thank but, you. That's why I had. <laughs> <laughs> I like. The, she's like my secretary. Yeah, uh, sir. You said you want to love the world more than the story. I just want to make a correction. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have my two o'clock meeting ready? <laughs> yes. I'll where's, have a cup of coffee. Yeah, I was okay. gonna say, where's the coffee? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. I'll, uh, the, the director here, this is what I'm going to tell, I'm gonna have to help get you to help the, me out. Yeah, here. pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, what's his name? Oh, God, I even butcher Dennis, it. Dennis yeah. Villanueva. 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 Den, Villanueva. Denny did, Denny Villanueva. Villanueva. He says, please, get to my name right. I'm a serious director. Yeah, he's in a, one of the, our best directors in our modern time. I make serious art. He does. I don't think I've seen his teeth in any pictures. I hope that he's he smile one bit. Nope. I'm a very serious artist right now. <laughs> But man, I'm gonna tell you. Here's the compliment: this director and the writers, they took the density of that book, they took the fine details of that book, and what they did with that man is amazing. Because where everybody was talking about is so dense, bringing all these details, oh, people are gonna you're gonna, you're gonna push people away with that. What they did here, and I'm saying this without having read the book, what they did here. They use those fine details to build a very believable alien world, man. I felt like uh, I felt like this was uh, I felt like I was on a trip in a, in, a, in a foreign country. I felt like I was traveling to a foreign country. You know, I'm soaking up the sights, learning about the people, learning about the culture, sipping on that spice. <laughs> you know, it's it was it was uh, something where it felt so real to me. Where it's like, all right, I don't understand everything about it, but I'm learning. And the stuff I don't know what I'm I, I don't know about, I having trouble learning. Well, that's what happens when you go to a foreign country, man. When you don't know everything for the first time. I'm saying this is like being a tourist in a foreign country in a cool way because the art direction and those massive sets, man. Yeah. You know, there's so much that that is computer and practical here. That they create a world that just feels real, man. The director, the director, and the direction made it feel immersive. You know, and these sets are incredible. It's like an HR Geiger without all the penises. You know, without all the phallic symbols, without all the you know the sexual innuendos in there. There's the one time I saw people take a real, a real good HR Geiger influence and not look like they were ripping off yeah. HR Geiger completely. The first version of Dune uh, Jodorowsky was supposed to have Geiger influence because Geiger was originally hired for that movie. Mm-hmm. That movie fell through and. T- Thanks to that, uh, the writer and Geiger met, and they created Alien. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's well, how we got Alien thanks to that movie failing. That's how the original writer uh, and, and because the writer went to Ridley Scott and told him, like, listen, if you want to make this movie memorable, you need to get this designer. And they know each other because of that failed movie. Well, it's all come full circle. And if you ask me, it's come full circle. And, yep. you know, at least visually, the best way possible. Man, y'all got to listen. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing, and that's cool because it's gonna be on HBO. And if you have, if you had a if you have a great TV at home, then awesome, man. You know, watch it for that. Crank up the sound. Make sure you boost that picture. This is great. But you know, if you are a visual person, you love cinematography. Go watch this on IMAX. The thing about Denny, what's his name? Denny Whip. 
Yeah, Got into your mind. I have to look at it. How, how is it? Vino Nueve? Vino Nueve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you said Vino Nueve. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> uh, you can tell that he's a... Uh, uh, that he loves Lawrence of Arabia, man. Oh, That's yeah. probably why he wanted to direct this movie, because he wanted to direct some epic sand. <laughs> Come on, man! He just wanted to put beautiful dirt up on the big screen, and I would say Dune is his Lawrence of Arabia, man. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the it's an epic. Yeah, it's epic, man. I mean, you got these big empty scenes that are gorgeous. Emptiness has never been so beautiful, man. We can make galaxies and creatures and all kind of stuff with the push of a button that you know it would take it would take a miracle to do back in the day. So that's that's a dime a dozen now, you know. Unfortunately, but when you have somebody who's coming in and they are doing the kind of world building like they're doing here, you don't put it on there just for spectacle. You make that world for me to actually live in. Yep. That's rare. Now. Well, you sold me. Well, I'll tell you now, having said all that, what? I said uh, now, have, you know, yeah, having said all that, and I just said, you know, this is this is like being a, a tourist or traveling to a foreign country in the best way. But I have to tell you, if I want to make that comparison, it feels like sometimes you're traveling alone. And the people are really hard to talk to. <laughs> the people, you ever been someplace as beautiful and the people just been dull as f <laughs> You know, it's just, the people are just not that exciting. <laughs> They're like, wow, y'all got some cool buildings, but y'all ain't got no personality at all, man. <laughs> and that, that is where I think, I, that, that's where I think things kind of fall apart here for me, man. Uh, you know, sadly, and I want to, man, I want to like these characters a lot, but sadly, let's start out with Paul, man. Paul Atreides. Paul Atreides, man, your main character we talked about. Look, y'all, Paul is just, to me, he's just not that interesting of a character, man. Paul, Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't say unlikable. I just said he's not that interesting. Paul's a good kid. His parents are raising him right. He's a good son. You know, I tell you what is going on. He's just, he's just mopey, man. You can tell by that Edward Scissorhand, <laughs> Scissorhand hair he got. Yeah, you know, yeah. he's, just, he's, just, he's just mopey, man. It's like, he's one of those teenagers where... He, you know, he's a good kid, but he's just like, God damn, man, make a decision. You know, you ask him, hey, what's going on? What do you want to do? How's it going? You want to go do something? You, hey, you want to go eat? <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's always that kind of mopey thing going on. I don't feel me. <laughs> I guess I'm not in the mood today. Now fight! <laughs> like, Jesus, this is my... <laughs> I thought we were just playing. That was awesome. <laughs> Come on! Well, look down, my lord. Yep. You to join me in death. Oh, look at Carlos over there. Yeah, just like the book. <laughs> Is that in the book? Yeah, exactly like the book. That's the best interpretation I've seen of the force field because the lights they're using force field for practice combat. You know that tells me something, man. This movie just needed the right time to be made with the right technology. It does. Like, they couldn't do this kind of no, technology back no. then to make it seem. Have you seen like it is in the books? Have you seen that same scene, but the David Fincher one? Yeah, uh, oh, you mean David Lynch? David Lynch. Sorry, David Lynch. Have you seen the same scene? Um, Wait, it's Patrick Schwartz. No, I have not. But uh, I saw this cat milk <laughs> scene. <laughs> I'm sure the character or any of these characters will mean something to the people who read the book. To me, it's just Paul. He lacks personality for me, man. Especially for a character destined to be the hero. It just I was just kind of bored with the character. I mean, I, you know, except for scenes where he was actually doing heroic things. But you know the. The other thing with this character also is this, it's it's when we were talking about the hero's journey, you know, he's the destined hero. He is the chosen one. He is the one that has. And I know that, again, Dune had a lot of influence on a lot of the storytelling. But, you know, he's the, he's the same character that we've seen over and over again. He's got prophes prophetic visions of things that are going to happen in the future. I want to interrupt you so bad and say things, but I can't because everything I want to say is from the second part. Okay, well, you know what? If they yeah. make that second part, then if they great. Ma if they make it a lot of what you're saying right now, you'll be very surprised. There's where the problem with the books come in because yep. it takes so long to actually build character that this character, you don't get to, you, you know, you're not getting to his arc in this movie. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. There was no way of that happening. That character just go around kicking rocks. <laughs> I don't know. I just am not in the mood today. <laughs> you know, I was like, God damn, get up and go to school. <laughs> the villain's weak. We don't know them well. 
All they're doing is doing what villains do. They sit in sinister, dark-ass places, talking to the underlings about their sinister plans, telling Skarsgård Stars Guard as Vladimir. He's just sitting all day on his big ass, just trying to give orders to people while he's breathing heavy. Trying to breathing, <laughs> and I can't imagine bathing. Bathing, bathing. yeah, just sweaty and fat and sitting on Greasy. his ass and having trouble breathing, trying to tell people, all his underlings, what to do. <sighs> Kill them. <laughs> Kill them all. Yes, Uncle. You know, that's the, you know, what villains do. Kill them. Kill anyone who stands in our way. You haven't said something I need to ask. Do they explain why they are like they are? Why are people? Because they're uh, all human. From what I saw was the politics of they want to, you know, to struggle over the spice. No, no, but I mean, why do they look the way that they look? Why no. are they? They no. do not explain that. No, because I'm even looking at. Fuck. Because I'm look, I'm looking at a Dave Batista as the nephew of uh, the Beast, Vladimir the Beast, and he's looking like. He looking like he just came from Krypton right now. They don't like explain. He's to start some they shit don't with, explain. Like he's trying to start some shit with Superman. So he like he just wanted in the wrong movie. So it was I was really disappointed because Dave Batista is becoming becoming such a you know he's, household name. Well, he's becoming a household name, and I'm enjoying his performances in, in movies. And yeah. he's just here. You know, he's just in here. You know, just pretty much. Where are they? You know, doing what a what a what a villainous henchman does. Yep. Big ass. You know, it's a. I, I really was disappointed in that. And I'll tell you why. Because if you can't make your heroes that interesting, then throw in a really cool villain, man. Disney's done it for decades. Disney's done that for almost a century. Di watch any old Disney movie. Watch any Disney's early animated movies. Yeah. When you watch Snow White, you might go, Snow White is the most boring person. Don't even get me started on The Prince. Who, uh, who makes that shit interesting? Maleficent. We're wrong movie. Oh, sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> but you were right. Yeah, Maleficent is one of them. I love the way you thought you were right. You saying it. <laughs> Maleficent. I was cool like, and everything. I got there. <laughs> you were wrong. <laughs> Same idea, though. Same idea. The, 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 wick, the, the, uh, the, the, the evil queen. Oh, yeah. But uh, Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty is Sleeping the one Beauty. that was It's like, you know, the prince and Sleeping Beauty. Ain't nobody care about them, man. Maleficent is the yeah. one that you see that movie for. Even a great movie that has really cool heroes like 101 Dalmatians. Cruella. Uh, the movie be cool with them, but would it really be great if Cruella wasn't such a big personality? No. If you didn't, your movie sometimes can be great if you have a villain pulling the anchor, man. And they, they, the, these villains just pull this movie down, and Oof. they don't help these boring characters at all. There's some great performances in here. Don't get me wrong. Y'all know I love, love, love Oscar Isaac, um, who plays uh, Duke. Uh, uh, what's his name? The Duke. The Duke and Duke and, Lido. Uh, yeah, man. You know uh, they, they're. Don't get me wrong. People are moting in here. There are some characters to root for. Um, you know, I think with characters who I like, I feel like just kind of as dry as they are. I think people are going to gravitate towards some of the smaller characters. Um, <laughs> why, why are you laughing? <laughs> no, I kind of think which characters already they're going to gravitate. They have way more personality than Paul ever well, did. You already got. The character of Duncan, who's played by Aquaman, yeah. who in this is being Aquaman. Jason yeah! Momoa. <laughs> you, know, you, know, come on. you know, he's being Aquaman yeah. here. He's Aquaman on the sand. <laughs> <laughs> the character of Gertie, people are going to like. And that character is one dimensional, man. Yes. Uh, you know what his character is? Man. That's it. <laughs> but it's the type of man that should be funny, that should be endearing. Yeah, he's always the guy who's like, you know, like, like the Duke is up there trying to, he's making some good progress. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you know, okay, you agree to let us come to the planet. We're going to, like, agree to, like, you know, leave you alone and stay out your way. And he's the one always, he's always the one coming up in the background. You really trust these assholes? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, this <laughs> you want to do that? <laughs> Not even done with this scene that he's already talking mad shit about everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's always the one hot-headed. Yep. But he's, he's, he feels like he has some personality. Very, yeah. Yeah, Josh Brolin. Y'all oh, yeah, yeah. forgot Josh Brolin? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> For uh, the people out there who are Zendaya fans, don't Oof. let that smile fool you. She's hardly in the movie. Yeah. She's pretty much at the beginning narrating, and she comes in at the end narrating something. That that is so. If you a Zendaya fan, you, if you ain't talking, to, you ain't. If you're not saying, man, I'm, I'm gonna go see Doom. If you're saying, man, I'm gonna go see the Zendaya movie. No, no. Then this is the not. This is not the movie for you because she's hardly in the film. 
of course, will have a bigger role if they actually have another uh, another film. So, a so much depends on part two that much of the worry now. Well, that's where I'm worried myself because there's so many good things here, but between the characters, the weak villains, and then there's the ending. But with the characters in the ending, man, this is you did not leave on a high. You did not leave. I mean, I left on a high very of, of being impressed. I thought that you know, again, the visuals were amazing. The cinematography is gorgeous, but the end of this, man, they just they just end. Yeah. And I tell you, like, there's no cliffhanger. You know, there's a, you don't, they, you, they leave with you barely caring, at least me barely, barely caring about the characters. But what got me is that they didn't want to end strong because it was almost had this attitude of like, well, <laughs> y'all be back. We got another one. Y'all going to be back. And I'm thinking, well, is it safe to always assume? Because this movie, this is the movie where I really don't know how this is going to perform. You know, I don't know if people are going to show up in the numbers that they need to show up for in order to get another another chapter out of this if you can come in and like you said actually show me the stronger part of the story which is not this part it's not and if you can get i mean i w- i still wish whether they had a sequel planned or not whether they were going to shoot this back to back i still don't like the way they ended it man it should have ended with this is a movie okay you yeah. know I know maybe the book didn't do this, but into something where to, in, in this where we we're looking forward, like damn, ooh, what you know the whole what you gonna do now, and that didn't end with the what you gonna do now. It ended with like okay, well, that's done. So I I'm I, disappointed by that. I was very disappointed by that. A lot of people gonna be talking about it. two and a half hours. That I ain't hanging. Out, I ain't hanging out in this dirt for two and a half hours. <laughs> All right, well. I can only speak for myself, and I know this sounds confusing when we're talking about how it just ends, but I will say, man, two and a half hours, they ended it right at the right spot. Awesome. Because uh, if, the, if, if I, I did not feel the two and, a half, two and a half hours, and if I did start to feel it, we were ready to go. If I, I probably started like the last five minutes. I'm like, all right, let's go ahead and wrap this That's up. That's awesome. And they did. And, you, and, and I think the reason why is because, don't, I mean, listen, and I'm just going to Tell you like it is, man. You're gonna hear a lot of people geek it out over Dune. You're gonna have, you're gonna hear a lot of nerds talking about Dune, and it's gonna make you think you don't want to watch this because you're, they're, they're gonna be speaking in languages and talking about terms. No, and, they should. And characters they should. that you don't, that you don't. You're like, I don't know what the hell you are saying right now. You might as well be, be speaking Chinese. Well, I'm gonna say that again. This movie did had some great direction in the sense that it's paced out well. The action scenes. The action scenes are paced out real well, man. It, you know, because y'all know how they tease, uh, they tease those, those sandworms in here, man. Go, go, go! That's what everybody wants to see, big worm. You know, that's what everybody's waiting on. And they, have, they, they keep teasing it and teasing it and telling you about the worm. You've seen it in the, in the trailers and yeah. the commercials, but they keep talking about how big it is, how destructive it is. And even though you've seen it, that anticipation is still built till they actually get to the scene itself. And when they do that, man, you know, it pays off. They have a really cool action sequence. It's a rescue scene with a worm attack. And they have these scenes in there that are paced out. Right when it seems like things might be getting dry, things might be getting dense, bam, worm attacks are, boom, Game of Thrones betrayal. Uh, so I really have to commend them for taking that book, which, again, people say is so dry, and them keeping it, uh, you know, for lack of no, no pun intended, spiced up all the way through. That's, that's a pun, first. No, I really, <laughs> not mean to, I really did that's not know. Like I had no other words. But I'm glad to hear that because from what I'm hearing, this might be a better adaptation of Doom than the actual book. Because the book is not perfect. The book has a lot of flaws. And even myself, I love the book for what it is. I don't think it's a perfect book. Well, that book is there for people who want to read it. That book is there for people who want to know all the details. You know that that book is there for people who want to go, who want to deep, deep, deep dive. You know, with this, but this movie is for the fans and the newcomers alike, man. I would say the biggest weakness of the book is the pacing and the structure of itself. It's not even the world building, and it seems to me that that was the biggest thing that they, you know attempted to do is guide people step by step in the process because the book yeah. starts with like a hundred characters a hundred definition and you don't know what the f- 
reading. No, and we yeah, no, you're lost. Hey, listen, we ain't meeting a hundred characters here. No, we okay. ain't doing all that shit. You know, no, no, we ain't. You know, they, they ain't speaking in, in in tongues in this. All right. So no, it's 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 cool. Now the only thing that I will say. Now this is and this is where I'm gonna piss some people off, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Now, you know me, I'm gonna speak my mind and always. If y'all get mad, and so be it. We've been here before. <laughs> we'll, y'all get mad at me today. We'll be friends tomorrow. You know, the dog house. Yeah, yeah. Y'all ain't you gonna hate me for this, y'all? But I'm gonna bring it up. We talked about how this is the chosen one, the hero's. Yep. The hero's journey. Uh, that thought. That's always been sort of a Cliché. very white hero centric story arc and if i say it's kind of aged in any kind of way and, and you yeah. know there's something they could actually done with casting here but they don't want to do that you know they want to make that money uh let me just say this uh most of your characters of color uh sent to slaughter man they 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 are sacrifices and it's funny because it starts out very very light tan and gets darker as it goes along <laughs> so they you know people's the if, if you have if you have a drop of color up in you, prefer to, uh, 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 prepare to lay your life down for all the white characters in this, and that is just, hey I'm just saying that that is something that that's a reflection of the times, man. It's not only a reflection of the times; it's a reflection of colon- colonialism, because this are this is us hundreds of years traveling to a planet to colonize colonize it ah yeah. I can't pronounce it for so the, it ain't so easy either. <laughs> yeah it's not it's easy. uh to get you know their resources yeah and you that's know, you know it's yeah. funny that this is a you know book about colonialism in yeah, a way yeah it's a book about that so yeah man so if you go in there looking for your black heroes to actually or, no. or your brown heroes to do anything or your asian brothers to do something uh i'm just gonna say I'm just, going, I'm just telling you, they 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 take them out to pasture, man. So yeah, <laughs> yeah just let, just letting you know. Uh, except for probably Zendaya, you know, but but then get, like I said, then again, she's not a big character here. And also, to be fair, that is something that could very much change in the next chapter. I can see that changing in the next chapter. It changes in the next chapter if they do it. Because yeah. by nature, by nature of where the story, I think I know where it ends by what you told me. By nature of it, yes, they have no option but to have all the brown folks. Yeah, no, it's a, it's, it's gonna black and brown folks. That's I think, it. yeah, they boy, they took them. <laughs> yeah, you know why? Look, you know one why? By one by one. Yes. Yeah, but you know, you know, I'm just saying, man, that, that'll probably be better in the next movie, man. It's something that they'll do. I even seen the chat. Some people said that they will inverse that. Uh, to where the power, the power struggle and the power dynamics, they change a little bit. I don't want to say a lot because if I start talking, then we go into spoiler territory. If my dumb ass can go watch this movie and not only appreciate what I see as far as the scope of this and the beauty of it, but I understand the story, then y'all can too. I, I would say, if I was to rate this, uh, I'd give it a high matinee, man. That's great. Yeah, it's a high That's matinee. That's a really good score. The only thing that brought it down is... Listen, if you're going to give me a story this big and I'm here for two and a half hours and this is supposed to be epic, you better give me some fucking characters to hang out with that I like. And I, I'm not going to say I hated them, but I was bored by them. Yep. I really wasn't that interested in them, man. You know, except for your boy. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> Aquaman always cool to hang out with. You saw it right then and all of a sudden he threw a one. Yeah, man. No, Aquaman is always cool. He's you know, whenever cool. I was hanging out with him, I was like, all right, man. Yeah. Is, yeah, we need to hang out more, man. You know, but, uh, but a high matinee, they... And a high matinee for a, for a, 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 you know taken material that they say could not be brought to the screen, that's a lot of praise. Yes, it is. That it's is, yeah, almost impossible to shoot in its book form. Yeah, no, I have a man. There's a there's a lot of movies. I tell you this, I'm giving this a a, a high a high matinee. You know, you in the way I'm praising this, y'all like. Man, you know, why don't you just go full price? Why don't you go better than sex? Well, again, this has some problems for me, but I tell you what. I give it a high matinee, but I have better than sex respect for what they do here. They it says in, a lot. Yeah, they went in here to make something genuine. This is not a this is not a money grab. Hey everybody, Double Toasted Live on tour is heading to Los Angeles, California, November 5th. We're going to be at the Miracle Room, and we had such an amazing show in New York. Has such a great experience. I want to thank everybody for that, but we can't wait to bring the same experience to you over in the lovely city of Los Angeles. So go to x1entertainment.com and get your tickets today. VIP and super VIP tickets are available, so get them now. But we're not just stopping there. Hey, as I said, this is a tour. So also catch us in Chicago, Miami, Orlando, 
in Dallas, Texas. Again, go to x1entertainment.com and get your tickets today, and we'll see you at a city near you. Hey everyone, support our Patreon, which helps us to continue bringing you our live streams, videos, and podcasts while bringing you new content such as exclusive live streams and animated shorts. 